My name is Joseph Wunderlich. I'm a professor of engineering, architecture, and computer science. I was born in 1961. Uh, until I was about 30 years old, I was entirely in the building industry, including a bachelor's degree in architectural engineering, a couple credits short of a second degree in urban design. Uh, uh, the, the, the architectural engineering, University of Texas, Austin. Uh, urban design was University of California, San Diego. Uh, in the 1980s, I supervised all the architecture, engineering, and construction uh, for real estate developers of $100 million worth of office park development in Texas and California. Also worked in a consulting firm in uh, San Francisco. And had uh, and to this day, I still have s several small projects or many small projects, including architectural commissions and uh, uh, b design build projects uh, in different parts of the country. Uh, I, I have enough edu education and um, and experience to get licensed as both a professional architect and professional engineer. I also have two EPA certifications for dealing with uh, uh, hazardous materials uh, and uh, and designing uh, buildings to mitigate and reconstruct after uh, abatement, uh, as well as a number of real estate courses. I have 200 college credits in architecture and uh, related things before I went to grad school and then another 100 for my master's and PhD in electrical and computer engineering, IBM research, Purdue University, etc. after that, and computer. When I present this talk in person, we'll go much slower and click on all these links and read all the details. For now, we're just going very quickly through the AIA, American Institute of Architects, established the standards in architecture. Uh, the NAAB accredits schools, uh, and then the NCARB regulates licensing. Uh, not every state requires um, the NAAB accrediting to get licensed, including Pennsylvania, Maryland, New York, Arizona, and California, although a lot of states do, so it's a good idea to get an NAAB accredited program. Uh, or, or you can do a pre-professional, uh, like at E-Town, and then do the master's NAAB accredited. The AIA Graphic Standards is a big, thick book that uh, is very expensive. I paid uh, the equivalent of about $300 uh, 40 years ago. Then I did spend $300 actually in cash, $2,000 for the next edition, and then uh, recently bought uh, the, th the, the 12th edition. Um, that's worth looking at. It's not just drawing standards. It's details and specifics uh, used as a standard. And then Revit, we'll talk about this a little bit more coming up, but the, uh, it's very important. It's not just the modeling software, but it's very professional uh, database connected to it for the, generating the specifications and drawing in the manufacturer's details and literature. Here's an example detail out of the AIA graphic standards. So some more on Revit here. Uh, come back and take time to click on the Elizabethtown College Architecture Projects link and uh, view quite a few student projects in there over uh, for 15 years now. Do take the time to come back and look at the Suites catalog. So through that, students will have exercises in Revit that draw on Suites catalog uh, details and, and the CAD and the BIM. So again, we go very fast through this, and I expect students to come back and drill down into each of these things if, we're, if you're just listening to the narrative for uh, some reason here. Although when I present this uh, in person, we'll go very slowly through all these things, of course, and drill down. So the real estate developer is the main person raising the money, getting the funding. Uh, they, they have to deal with the planning commissions or a variety of planning commissions at the county or local level. And here's some links to Lancaster County, Elizabethtown Borough. And, uh, you know, they may need a variance if they're trying to propose something that uh, deviates from the standard uh, 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 land use uh, ideas for a particular area. And then also a link to Elizabethtown College Master Plan. So uh, take a look at this uh, uh, in detail here. This is for the city of Elizabethtown. Uh, this is for the college, Elizabethtown College. So you want to take a look at that. And these maps here and details. So speaking of uh, master plans and uh, governing bodies, um, you know, colleges will have master plans and, and cities and townships and, uh, and, and, and counties. And so I worked uh, in the 1980s for, um, uh, after working for the developers and building all those things, I went and worked for San Diego County. Uh, 30 hours a week while I was doing my urban design education at UCSD. And so I worked uh, 
uh, reviewing a big couple hundred page environmental impact reports, looking at uh, mitigating measures um, recommended by the people proposing these developments to the County of San Diego, and then I'd, I'd make recommendations to the elected officials. Uh, and so the EPA is the federal agencies, and then for Pennsylvania, it's the DEP. And so you want to look down and see how each of those regulatory agencies work. LEED sets standards. This is not a governmental regulatory agency. This is standards that people adhere to, and people can get accredited with put something after their name, a GA or AP. And then uh, you certify buildings. I teach all about this. And, uh, ND stands for neighborhood design, and that applies to, to master plans as well as cities, and then BD and C is building design and construction, O and M is operation and maintenance. You also have interiors, interior design and construction, IDC. And then uh, again, uh, we'll come back, and uh, this is a fast read through here, so, but come back and look at lead and details and material life cycle and all from cradle to grave, cradle to gate, and uh, you know, local sourcing of materials as well as reusing materials. and. You know, and, and how it's manufactured, transport, installation. Everything has an impact, environmental impact. You want to very much think of impacts and mitigation. If you're, if you're proposing something or you're working for planning commission or you are a developer or an architect or engineer consulting or consulting uh, to a uh, developer, think of the impacts. There's always going to be some kind of impact, but you do some mitigating measures and then overall you have a net gain and it will be allowed to be built. Uh, more details on uh, lead. If you could bring everybody in ahead of time in a charrette, it's called. Uh, that is a great idea, um, and you get points for that. Typically, developers in the past, uh, historically, just you get you get your investors and you get the architect in a little bit for some concepts, and then you fund the project and get it going, and then you start worrying about bringing in engineers and and customers and <clears throat> and the community and the contractors. It's a good idea to bring everybody in ahead of time. There's good ideas everybody has. And you have a much better design, better for the community, is, uh, you know, as well as better engineering and architecture if you can get everybody involved. Although you can end up being designed by committee if you get too many people involved. You have to be uh, careful of that. That's uh, you know, uh, a saying. Designed by committee is not a good thing. Case studies, architecture is like law. It's like uh, it's like medicine in the way in, in, in with respect to learn from case studies. And so you really need to be in school. You need to travel. You need to typically be in school at least five years to practice architecture. Um, very often seven or eight. Uh, you know, eight would be a bit much, but seven seven is not atypical uh, to get all of your education. And then you got to work for a while, just like licensing for. Uh, engineering you need to practice for a while before you take your licensing exam same for our architecture csa construct csi construction specifier institute uh, sets the divisions uh, that everybody adheres to including the aia uh, this is what it looks like now it used to be about a third of the size of this now it gets very specific in the divisions it reorganized uh, a number of years ago suites catalog again is a very important uh, collection of uh, Manufacturers materials now online and connecting to Revit. Again, more about Revit, how it's more than just uh, for the 3D drawings, uh, but also for the information specifications. I have some basic tutorials on Revit you can see here and many student projects going back almost 15 years. And then animating the 3D models uh, we can do also now for... Uh, and 3D Studio Max for animating, and also Lumion, and we have these now. Virtual reality is now also a powerful tool to be used in architecture. You put your 3D models in there, and uh, people can experience a much more real kind of uh, walkthrough. You can see more here at this link. But uh, back to what's governmental oversight now. You, you have building ins inspectors and permits. This is different than the zoning uh, and the planning commissions and the uh, zoning regulations for land use. This is a code enforcement for the details, uh, for safety, certainly, and uh, broken down structure, moisture, insulation, fire resistant, egress, uh, all these things. And so local municipalities will enforce a certain building code. Uh, this is my Pennsylvania project, and this is an old and new house put together, uh, structural 
codes adhered to. Uh, architecture model for that. Details of that. Uh, moisture protection also uh, designed into this project. Let's see details of that. Again, we're going very fast here. Come back and take a look. This this whole lecture should take about an hour and 15 minutes when I present it in person, as I, I normally will. Uh, but this is a fast uh, overview. Fire resistance, very important, especially in California. The fires now, but everywhere. Uh, egress, people have to get out of the building in emergencies. And, and get into the building and ac access for people uh, uh, all over the building, within the building, in and out, of course, also, but within the building for people with disabilities uh, adhere to the ADA requirements. And of course, healthy environments, air exchanges, VOCs. I have two EPA certifications from being in the consulting firm. I worked in San Francisco, mitigating um, environmental impacts and Bay Area Rapid Transit System and the University of California, Santa Cruz, as well as uh, San Francisco Municipal School Districts. Uh, it's not a trivial thing to make clean air, especially when there's uh, viruses going around. Uh, and understanding aerosols, understanding air exchanges, uh, understanding filtration systems, HEPA filters, biological versus particulate suspended and how they flow in the air. It's not a trivial thing. And uh, you need people with expertise to deal with that. Energy efficiency. This is built into the building codes, uh, usually uh, based on standards, somewhat from LEED, but other things and building codes in other countries uh, usually exceeds a lot of the LEED standards. And, and so the, the countries can and often do, uh, countries and states, uh, uh, enforce um, green standards of, of their own, uh, you know, enforceable. Electrical, of course, power. This is why uh, electrical engineers need professional licensing to prove that they uh, are guaranteeing the safety. Uh, structural is probably the most critical engineer to have licensing. Uh, computer engineers as well, though, uh, now that was arguable for a while. But, uh, you know, we have flying autonomous vehicles and other things where the AI and code can actually end up in people getting hurt. You need some accountability, and so licensing for computer engineers is important now, too. Uh, plumbing systems, this is what Revit will do for you, this kind of thing. HVAC, it will do this for you, too. Uh, Bryn Kirsch, now uh, undergraduate engineering minor in architecture, E-Town, is doing this. I believe she worked a little bit for uh, a colleague of mine. Or we were students together in 1979-80 at and architectural engineering when I first started at Penn State before it transferred to the University of Texas. She called me up, asked for students, uh, and then the students competed. She has her own firm in Washington, D.C. and a branch in, in uh, Harrisburg. Uh, also, Cal Graziano, I think he might have worked there. Also, undergraduate engineer, uh, architectural studies minor, and now he's a grad student, uh, Master's of Architecture, University of Michigan, after working a couple years in the Midwest and in uh, Manhattan. Uh, on A&E projects, including a lot of Revit. And he, he really led the way when we started up the whole Sports Fitness and Wellness Center. 2014, I organized 22 judges and all my 20-something students to a competition on that. Made that a real thing back when uh, there wasn't a, both a financial crisis and a COVID going on. Um, uh, you know, Sports Fitness and Wellness Center was a good idea then and should be, again, once we can generate revenues uh, from summer camps and things. Uh, worth mentioning, because probably have people saying, oh, that's killing us now. Uh, you know, those summer camps, I visited one summer camp with cheerleaders uh, right before COVID um, in the summer 2019. There was about 5,000 people in there. They're paying $1,700 or $17 a person and 5,000 people. And the concessions were ridiculous, ridiculously expensive uh, for food. There's a kitchen in there. And that was just a one-day event, so you know you could you can easily uh, you know generate some income with that kind of space in non-COVID times, of course. That's changing everything. Uh, building codes, acoustics, acoustical engineering. Uh, a consultant from um, uh, Dr. Roy from Armstrong, an international expert on that. Uh, he knew my my acoustics professor that I had from forty years ago, Kingsbury. 
Uh, I am not an expert in acoustical engineering. I had a whole course in it, and I did do a little bit of specification and consulting firm for reconstruction, but very minor. To, to really do this well, you need a whole career in this. Uh, in many engineering fields, you really need to focus, very much focus on your field before you can declare yourself an expert. So acoustical engineering is an example of that. Illumination engineering, I don't speak about in this whole series here too, but that's a whole other thing. That's a, that's a whole thing in itself too. I do have a lecture, a number of lectures on that. So a couple of projects uh, that I worked on that I, you can see in my portfolio in more detail. This is a, a project manager on this, 13 buildings um, and, uh, and tons of people, 60 contracts, subcontractors, each one, you know, drywall people had a couple hundred people working in that. So each one of these subcontractors is a whole company in itself. So I acted as the general contractor for the developers. Um, and I also worked on some of the designs with the interior space planners. Uh, uh, and a little bit with the architect on the job. We had an in-house architect. <clears throat> and that was the Boca Building Code. So that was Boca Building Code. And this uh, this is now Uniform Building Code. This I'm doing in California. Uh, now I'm the project, uh, the director of projects in charge of everything, um, uh, including all of the architects and engineers and uh, negotiating all contracts for quite a bit. Now, this is one of several projects. This is the biggest project. And I got to have a lot of input in the design, picking materials, picking forms, shapes, um, uh, a lot. My own project here uh, in Pennsylvania, I'm hearing to both uh, uh, a number of codes. Um, even though the IBC now is, rules everything, when I first started building this, I was building it to the worst case scenario of both the Boca and Uniform Building Codes for both uh, earthquake standards in California and uh, you know, hurricane and tornado standards in Texas and Midwest. And so, um, uh, so as again, this, is a, this, this uh, talks about all the different participants. You've got the developer, architect, engineers, uh, governmental officials, initially planning commission people type people, and then later code enforcement. And then, of course, the contractors that build it with all the subcontractors and all the, the, the people with very much special uh, skills in each of the trades. And, and it varies by commercial versus uh, residential construction, whether you're a wood carpenter or steel frame kind of a, of a, a rector of uh, partitions and, and commercial construction. Uh, and so, or steel erectors, each, each one of those is a very specific field. And, and so there's a lot of people involved um, and standards also, uh, engineering standard, architectural standards, lead green standards, as well as uh, a number of uh, participants. 